I'm famous artist Cole Brazel, founder of How to Art Stuff. Today, we're going to go on a magical journey, and I'm going to teach you how to art a portrait. Come on. Finding a good reference is imperative when it comes to doing a good portrait. I chose this old photo of my friend Carlos. Notice, as the painting progresses, how either side of his face is hit with a different light source. It really gives a nice contrast and at the same time, either side complements each other. If you find a good reference, then all you need to do is be a good painter. Your sketching phase will be the first time you actually start putting paint to canvas. I'm using a watered down black acrylic to sketch out the portrait and try and get some of the proportions right. Some artists spend a lot of time in their sketching phase. Um, they might even render out an entire drawing before they start putting color on top of it. Me personally, I like to just get a good gist of what the person might look like and then go right from there and start adding paint because I know I'm going to paint over all of it anyway so I'm, I'm not going to stay too true to my original sketch I'm more just using it as a guideline for the rest of my painting. It's important to remember that how things relate to one another in a portrait are more important than how things look individually. If I paint Carlos's nose perfectly and his mouth perfectly, they're still not going to resemble him as a unit if the space between those two are off. I'm gonna go grab some more cereal and then we can get right into the painting. All you need to do is remember three simple things and your portrait or painting for that matter will be bomb. The first thing you'll want to be considering while you're painting is your colors how they relate to each other, how they mix with each other, and how they complement each other is super important when trying to make something effective happen on the canvas. You'll notice that I tend to paint noses a bit red, and it's not because I tend to paint people with red noses, it's simply that I'm using that red to bring the nose forward and, and make it more predominant. Using more intense colors like that to paint things that are closer to you or that need to be predominant keeps your painting from looking flat and really ends up making the colors in the whole portrait pop. The next thing you'll want to keep in mind while you're painting is your value. Value might be the most important aspect of painting in general when you're trying to make something look realistic. Notice that even though I'm using two opposite colors to paint either side of the face, it still holds true when it comes to value. A good trick to figure out if your values are correct is to take a black and white photo of your painting as you go, and that will help you see the values more purely and not be distracted by the color. The third thing you'll want to consider while you're doing a painting is your shapes. Paint what you see, not what you know. As humans, we tend to have an oversimplified view of most common things. For example, when most people think of an eye, they think of an almond shape with some circles in it. But that's not necessarily true. Look at your reference and based on the angle and the lighting, it could be totally different than your preconceived thought of what an eye looks like. Over time, you will start to retrain your brain and be able to think of what things might actually be like in real life. As you get further along in your painting, remember that overblending is not always the simplest way to make something look accurate. Leaving your brush strokes can be one of the most effective ways to give your painting character and life. Can I get a bowl? 
So while trying to maintain my brush strokes and some of the style of my painting, at this point I'm really starting to bump in some of the lights and darks. So you'll see some of the deeper shadows like under the eyebrows and under the nose and hair come in well you'll see some of the lighter parts like on the cheeks and on the on the shine of the nose really start to pop and that's going to bring everything together now that my painting is starting to actually resemble a real person you're gonna see me glaze a little bit glazing is kind of like adding Instagram filters it's just a thin layer of color to tint the rest of the painting towards the, the color I want it to. Glazing is the step that fixes all of your value and color issues from before and it really makes the painting pop. The final step when doing a portrait is to start to knock in some of the details. I said can I get a bowl of cereal? And this is when knowing when to stop really comes into play. It's easy to add too much detail when you're doing a portrait especially. You want areas that you chose prior as the focal points to be the spots with the most detail. In this case, it's the eyes or the lips or the nose. Those are the spots that I want the viewer to look at, the viewer to have a connection with. So if I go in and add too much detail into the cheeks and the freckles and all those things, add too many beard hairs, it's going to take away from how much detail I put in the eyes. So try not to over render, it will end up taking away from how interesting your portrait looks because of that connection that the viewer has with like the eyes or another focal point. So try and get in enough detail and then call it quits. And just like that, you now know how to paint a portrait. All there is to do now is actually go and paint a portrait. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed my video. Stay tuned for weekly posting on how to art stuff. And as always, have a great day.